Hi everybody, thanks for coming back. Uh, this is another tutorial on Substance Alchemist. Um, I wanted to do um, a couple tutorials on this just to show how, how good of a job Substance did with this program. Uh, I believe it's overlooked. Uh, I mean, I could be wrong. Um, the reason why I'm saying that is because I kind of overlooked it, but uh, just the power of this is just incredible. I uh, since the pandemic, I go for a lot of bike rides, uh, some walks, and I'll go out, I'll take some pictures. But um, my last tutorial, I made a snowy, rocky material, and uh, that was strictly from a picture I took in the summer. Um, so today I want to try something different. I wanted to go to textures.com. Uh, if you haven't used this, this is just a, an amazing website, even for free. They give you 15 credits. Um, I actually downloaded a, a material today I want to try out. We're going to try to make a painted uh, painted metal. So uh, let's get started. Uh, so what I want to do is call this painted metal. Uh, if you don't know how I did that, just file, new project. And uh, yeah, so let's click here. Get that picture in here. We're going to use it as a bitmap because we still uh, we need to do some work with the the 2D image. So go to your top right corner, 2D, scan one. And there you go. Click T on the keyboard so you can see how it's going to tile. Um, so moving forward, let's uh, go to Add Filter, Crop. Let's just leave it like that. Let's start like this. Uh, actually, you know what? I don't like... I don't like obvious, uh, it's an obvious detail here that will kind of give us a hard time when we're trying to tile this. So let's leave it like that. Um, as far as equalizer goes, I don't think we'll need one because it's pretty even across the board. Uh, we could add it just to see if it'll help us a bit. Uh, actually, yeah, maybe it did. Uh, yeah, okay. Let's do a, let's add bitmap to material. Okay, switch it to 2D and 3D. Uh, I want this, I want the mesh to be, um, a cube. Oh, it is a cube already. Perfect. Okay. So uh, I'm noticing that there is some displacement there, which is definitely something I do not want. Oop, wrong one. Uh, let's, we could put a little bit, uh, not too much. Okay, so uh, right now, this is as basic as it's gonna get. Um, we need to tell Substance Alchemist that this here is a metal uh, surface. So I wanna come here, metal finish. Uh, so something I learned in school, uh, it's either something is metal or something isn't metal. Uh, a lot of people, we can take this, let's say we're in substance. I'll open up my revolver. Um, so this is a revolver I made. Um, I'm just going to exit everything here. I'm going to delete this all. If I could, why won't it let me select everything? Okay, let's just make a folder. That's not working either. Uh, let's just bring in the mesh. Okay, so makeshift gun, uh, gun, no. So the thing with metal and materials is that people think, okay, let me throw a basic material on here and give it um, like more of a copperish color. It's not really copper. Okay, something like that. Uh, and they're saying, well, let's make it a little bit metal. And they have something like that and they say, oh, wow, that's... Um, Oh, it came out nice. Uh, change the roughness value. I mean, it, it does look decent in your render, but 
something that's metal, it's metal, right? So it's either one or none. If you bring it up to one, you can really control it, right? Let's, okay, so let's put the roughness down for argument's sake. Does that look like metal? Or does it look like porcelain? Right? Metal needs to be fully reflective. And whatever the values of that metal need to be changed. So something like procedural, um, we could throw, let's do a scratches. It's going to turn into a substance painter tutorial. I'm just giving you more of a logic around, um, yeah, this should be good. A logic around uh, how metal actually looks. So even just like that, like having that metal pulling the values down you could just see like it just looks more like metal uh, there's no other way to to say it so that's something I learned in school uh, it's either something's metal or it, or it isn't um, okay so moving forward it's a pretty decent start um, I want to throw a tile on there uh, what I like to do is kind of build out my filters know exactly what I want to put on there um, this time I use something a little bit different it's called uh, make a tile advance there's a lot more parameters we can play around with um, I, I can't really pronounce that word chromances influence uh, so basically this is just a fancy word of uh, we're gonna screw around with the seams as you can see the, the difference here uh, obviously, the higher you go, it reduces the seams. I want to kind of keep it blended a bit. Keep this color. If you bring this all the way down, it's just going to give it a flat color. So we don't want that. We want a little bit of different. There we go. <clears throat> uh, do, 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 do. That's a pretty good way to start right now. Um, I want to let's add paint let's add a, a paint layer uh because i want to make this look like a painted metal so uh as you can see it covered it entirely and we no longer have a metal surface so what you can do is once you add that paint layer we'll go one by one let's add a let's add a a color to it uh i'm thinking something along the lines of Maybe a dark red, something like that. Just pretty cool. We'll bring down the roughness a bit, something like that. Uh, so I want some wear and tear to it. So there's a couple of things you can do here. Uh, affected areas would just be the entire surface. The curvature would be the metal finish, would be underneath. So, I mean, something like this is already decent enough for any texture, uh, if you're going for that look, right? But we're, we're not really going for that look. We're going for more of a corroded uh, paint look. So there's no metallic. We don't want any metallic there. Um, I want to keep it at surface, and I'm going to add some paint grunge to give that paint some depth. Uh, there's something called bubble, yeah, air bubble density. Uh, this adds a huge uh, variety of detail to it, as you can see. Uh, now we want it to peel. So we want to be able to see that surface underneath. Right, something like that. Pretty good. Uh, might be a little much. Yeah, okay. I like it. I like it. Uh, the paint, I'm not really crazy about it. It might be the color. Let's just drag this around, find a color we like. I'm under very sat... Uh, okay. Uh, let's do... Yeah, something like that. That should be okay. Okay, so we got that going here. Um, it's not lifting up from the surface as much as I'd like, so I want to just 
change this height filter. I mean, you could crank it up all the way if you want. Uh, I don't want to do that. Something around 60 should be okay. Uh, the hue and saturation, I don't, I mean, like we could screw around with it. I, I really don't like doing it. Uh, even like, it just doesn't make sense. I'm choosing the color already. So I'll just leave it like that for now. Maybe a little bit too bright. Okay. Let's bring that down. I want to add another layer. Um, I should have actually added it on top of the metal finish. So let's click that add here and I want to go to rust we're gonna add a little bit of rust here uh, because I mean it just makes sense why is the paint um, corroding what's happening is there some type of water dripping on it is it just through time you want to add some character to this this material so the rust will really help that up a bit let's get the, that going on here spreading smoothness um, I don't know if I want to add any varnish damage. Um, we could add some edge wear. It's not really going to do anything. Um, get that some drip intensity. Let it bleed onto the paint a bit. Um, yeah, okay. That's coming up pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, let's go back. This should technic actually we could keep it there because I wanted to kind of bleed onto the. That's okay. That doesn't matter really to be honest. Uh, drip intensity. I kind of want to add a little bit more. I like that the rust is bleeding off the metal and onto the paint. Uh, that should be okay. Uh, let's go through this. Let's see what else we can add. Uh, we could add some oxide oxidation oxidation. <laughs> uh yeah okay so this is a little bit tricky to play around with but again guys it's it's basically everything's basically made for me to experiment with let's do here get that edge bleed down density down might want to throw this under the paint Did it work? Oh, there we go. Okay, uh, let's add some dust or maybe some dirt. Actually, resources. Uh, where's the mud? We could add a little bit of mud to this. Uh, I'm going to put this over here. If you didn't know that, you can grab some materials. Uh, I mean, Substance is known for giving some good source material for people to experiment with. Uh, it's going to take a little bit. Might chug a bit. Okay. So what it does is it adds a blend effect. I don't know if I want to actually add this on here. Excuse me. Okay. So uh, it adds a little bit of texture to the, the paint. My computer is going to explode. It adds a little bit of difference. Uh, I mean, because it's an old paint, I want that that weirdness. I want some crazy stuff and look at it and be like, well, what the hell happened there? So this is a, this is a pretty decent material to start off with. Um, yeah, so, I mean, we could just keep going through stuff and, and look, but sometimes uh, if you add too much, then people can tell it's just an overkill. So I'm actually pretty happy with this. I want to export it. Let's go to export, export, current view, painted metal. I'm going to throw it on my desktop. I'm going to make the format an SBSAR. And uh, the reason for that is because I want to throw it into Substance. I want to be able to use it in Substance Painter. Um, so going to Substance Painter, um, there are many, many ways that you can drag in. Uh, I'm a little bit old school. I like to go through the 
the pathway, I'm pretty sure, just waiting for this to finish, I'm pretty sure you could just drag that SBSAR file into your shelf here and it'll just automatically add it in. This thing's taking a little bit longer to do. Okay. Uh, all right. So it's done. Should be on my desktop. Yep, there it is. So if you grab and just throw it in here, you want to put it as a base material and go down here to import your resources to your shelf because you want it in there forever. Uh, you could put it as current project only if you're using something more specific and you really don't care about it, then that's fine. Um, so here's our painted metal. Let's throw that over. And uh, yeah, so it did a pretty good job, actually. I'm pretty happy with that. I mean, I, I wouldn't use this for a gun. For sure, but I mean, as far as a rusted paint material goes, it's pretty good. That's pretty good. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'm starting off this tutorial series with just very basic... Um, basic materials uh so i've covered some rocky materials covered metal uh my next one will be about wood so uh yeah if you uh, have any questions uh leave a comment uh, leave a like if you want to subscribe uh yeah so thanks for watching and uh, take